It is Saturday, April 6th, actually. And welcome to a new episode of You Don't Watch Sports right here on the Feo Grande YouTube network. I am Bill Smith, and I am joined, as always, with the man, the myth, the legend, Feo Grande himself, Omari Ellis. Omari, how was your sports week? My sports week could have been better. You know, Battle Hawks debuted last week, suffered humiliating defeat. You know, oh. yeah, suffered humiliating defeat, death by field goals. Dude kicks like 364 yarders on us uh, oh. in one game. So that was unfortunate. Aside from that, you know, bounce back. First home game of the season today. <laughs> we got this. All right. Kaka. Kaka. We're going to cover three topics today on You Don't Watch Sports because we are just that. We are your guiding light through the sea that is sports talk. Sprinkle a little sports information into your conversation to get you through your week. Three easy topics, giving you some loose bullet points here. This week, we can't do anything but cover the men's Final Four. Uh, Omari, the games are happening tonight. Both huge. Uh, we have NC State versus Purdue. We have Alabama versus UConn. We got two number one seeds. NC State is an 11 seed. And then we have Alabama at a four. So the surprise here is NC State. Oh, yeah. Both games tonight. Uh, we have um, NC State Purdue at four o'clock Eastern time. Alabama UConn at around 645 Eastern time. Um, who you got? Um, okay. So full disclosure. Don't know the most about men's basketball. That said, NC State versus Purdue. I like a good, you know, underdog story. Give me NC State. Um, uh, solely because of that. Also, they've played 40, they're 26 and 14. They've played 40 games, and clearly they're on a roll heating up. Purdue's only 33 and 4. Somehow they've only played 37 games, but you know, they they're strong. And they're Purdue, as you know, everyone knows Purdue. But I'm rooting for the underdogs here. They're on a heater. They're, you know, they're heating up. They got more games. They got that momentum. It's like playing through the loser's bracket. Meanwhile, Alabama versus UConn. I'm going to be super casual about this and be like, Alabama's a football school. UConn's a basketball school. UConn wins. No, that's a valid point to have. <laughs> Alabama is always football focused. Um, you, this is on paper, this is UConn's to lose at this point. Um, but we all know these tournaments never occur as they should on paper or else the bracket culture would be a lot easier and a lot less fun <laughs> and a lot less popular. Um, these things always never happen as they plan. Although when you get to this small window, I am going to pick the top dog. I'm going to go with UConn to run it the rest of the hey, way. The um, dogs are husky. But I must say that I have been terrible this year. Uh, we did a bracket here at my office, and it went horribly. Uh, out of 14 participants from, from the office, I am currently living in 11th place. Um, so, But it ain't not, 14th. But it ain't 14th. So maybe don't take my advice on this one. Uh, moving on to topic number two. Got the other side of the Wait, coin. Who did you have Purdue versus uh, NC? Oh, uh, we're going to go with NC State just as the underdog. But then they but then they end up getting toppled by the giant. That is, is the final game also this weekend? Uh, the that... final game is going to be Sunday night. Of this week. Uh, yes, let me confirm that. It might actually be Monday, but I believe it is Sunday night. Okay. I got UConn taking it over NC State. The Cinderella story ends in sadness. Monday night. Monday night at eight, at uh, 7, 7.20 Eastern Time. Uh, we're looking at the championship game. Okay. All right, so now, yeah, let's flip to the other side of the coin. Uh, this game is Sunday, 
we are we are past the final four on the women's side of the bracket and moving into the championship game. Iowa number one seed versus number one seed South Carolina. Omari, let me know your thoughts on how we got here and what's going to go on at this championship game. Okay, South Carolina is coming in here undefeated at 37 and 0. So clearly they're on a tear. You want to talk about being on a heater, they're on a season long one. On the other side, though, we got Iowa. We're speaking of UConn being, you know, the basketball school. That's weird to me, as casual as I am, to not see UConn in the finals. They Didn't they have like a UConn. decade of dominance or some shit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, they lost last night to Iowa and Caitlin Clark with the last second uh, offensive foul on UConn leading to Iowa's victory. But Caitlin Clark's been on a tear. She's been offered millions of dollars by Ice Cube to join the big baller brand rather than go to the WNBA. So people been talking about her. They've been talking about her the whole past year. She beat her nemesis, Angel Reese, uh, dethroning the previous champs on the way here. And Angel, like last year, there was that whole debacle between her talking shit, Angel Reese talking shit, and then people being more mad about how one person talks shit compared to the other. And then this year, you know, rematch, Caitlin Clark wins. Angel Reese makes a big thing about like how all the negative feedback she's gotten from fans since winning last year. That was a big story over the last week. But sorry, Angel Reese, get him next time. Iowa's coming in here. They're going to try to take down South Carolina, but they're 34 and four. So they've shown at least four times they could lose this season. And they played one more game than South Carolina's 37 and 0. Still not exactly sure how all this works. They're both one seeds. So I, I'm confused at why the win loss records aren't the same or like same, you know, total number. That said, give me Iowa over South Carolina. You're really accentuating your nose and mouth today. Oh, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting like closer and closer. Nose and That's what happens when I'm not looking at the camera. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be the year of Caitlin Clark over on over over on the women's side of the NCAA. I mean, she's 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 toppled the all time scoring record. Um, now this is the next piece in that puzzle. This is the final piece in that puzzle to top off the year. Uh, it seems like it's only destiny for Io to win here, but mm -hmm. South Carolina, like you said, 37 games, they have not lost. And who knows? I mean, they didn't win the tournament last year, so obviously they had a loss at the end of the year, but 37 straight games, they have not experienced what losing feels like. Yeah, And Iowa cannot say that. <laughs> so anything can happen any given Moving sunday <laughs> absolutely <laughs> uh moving on to topic number three it is wrestlemania weekend we're in it we're inside it right now last night lots of stops on wrestlemania weekend i'm telling i'm talking to my wife about it. i'm like they, they kind of own the weekend i'm gonna i'm almost checked out I'll see you <laughs> Monday at 10 p.m. Um, but it's uh, lots of stops. First Friday, we had the Hall of Fame ceremony highlighted by Mr. Paul Heyman. Ah, uh, yes. We uh, all knew a matter of time before that happened. Absolutely, and it's only appropriate that he that he's uh, that it happens in Philadelphia, where ECW was born. So. Perfect. That makes sense why it didn't happen before he retired. They're like, it's in Philly, ECW hometown. Yeah. And and it might be and and they might be fully aware of us uh, of it being a situation of Paul Heyman may never retire. <laughs> he might always be doing this, and we got to get him while he, we got to get him while he's here. Um, mm -hmm. Also had wonderful wonderful inductions to Bull Nakano. Thunderbolt Patterson, the U.S. Express, as well as into the celebrity ring, uh, wing Muhammad Ali, and okay. um, and the Austin Rock's Italy. the oh, Rock's gross. grandmother, 
uh, Leah Mayavia uh, as the first female wrestling promoter in 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 history, uh, and then posthumously, uh, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt was not inducted this year. Oh, okay. They just had a moment to talk about him. Right, because uh, a member of the U.S. His, a member yeah. of the U.S. Express is his father. Gotcha. And 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 they were inducted by his children, Bray mm-hmm. Wyatt's brother and sister. Um. So yes, they they did acknowledge Bray Wyatt, and they had a moment where they put up the fireflies. Um. But uh, in the run up to this weekend, the Wyatt family openly admitted that, or op- openly stated that. WWE approached them and they decided that it was just a little it was too much too early that the documentary was going to be coming out and that that was perfectly fine for now and we can we can do we can do Bray somewhere yeah. down the road Um. so yeah that was a very special moment that's how the Hall of Fame ended with all the fireflies up mm-hmm. Uh. and that was that was wonderful Uh. moving on to today like just here, maybe going on as we speak, uh, Stand and Deliver is happening. Uh, the NXT big showcase of the year. It's going to be highlighted by two different matches. The NXT Championship, Ilya Dragunov versus the Dawn of the Family, Tony D- Tony D'Angelo. Uh, who who you got? Who you got in that one, Amari? Ilya's the champion, and he's been the champion for a minute, right? Yep. Some say it might be time for him to be called up. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Especially because, especially if, you know, Gunter is still running roughshod over the Intercontinental through this weekend, they may want to, that's a good storyline to just be like, well, we got some competition for you, motherfucker. It's your nemesis, the guy that dethroned you and made you change your name. (laughs) He's absolutely going to use that in a promo at some point. (laughs) (laughs) I made you change your name. (laughs) I I embarrassed embarrassed you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So uh, we got the uh, we got the next one. Trick Williams, Carmelo Hayes. They're going to be the true main event of this uh ple um uh pay-per-view um so that the, although they don't have the championship with them they are they are the bigger story of this event um i'm going to tie in both of my predictions together i think trick williams is going to win this match leaving an opportunity for carmelo hayes to go ahead and move up the brand meanwhile Ilya dragunov is also going to win his match we will tease, we will begin the tease of Ilya Dragunov coming up. He will appear on Raw. He may appear on SmackDown holding the NXT Championship. I think pretty soon at the next TakeOver, we will see Trick Williams dethrone Ilya Dragunov to become the NXT Champion as Ilya moves up to the big brand. I can um, see that because I don't know that much about Tony D'Angelo. So when you play it like that, that is more likely but i already did say that i got it uh what's his name winning d'angelo so yeah. i'm gonna stick i'm not gonna backtrack on that just because i've already said it but i will say whoop that trick is gonna win over carmelo hayes because people are loving them so yeah trick man looks. uh i yeah i i say i say strap a rocket to that man's back and 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 send him up but i think they're gonna i think they're get, gonna give him a little bit of time to cook I think I think it's a very appropriate for for the for the future that I think Trick Williams is going to have to give him a little bit of a test run still yeah. down in Florida with the with the with the belt. Yeah, and, I agree. Uh, and, and and let's go ahead and send Carmelo up to SmackDown, uh, and and end that feud so it can maybe heat up again. Somewhere, somewhere down the road. All right, so I got some random prop bets for you, Omari. All right, lots of WrestleMania moments that we like to look forward to. A couple of random ones I got for you. Longest entrance. Who's got the longest entrance of WrestleMania? Roman Reigns Sunday night. 
Yeah, that's going to be a pretty long one. That's going to be a pretty long one. I'm going to vote for I don't know when he shows up, but The Undertaker will still oh. make an appearance at WrestleMania. Ooh. And that man walks slow. <laughs> he does. If, if, yeah, if, if, if Taker shows up, that's that's a very good. But very I think Roman's good. right there, too. He could even be yeah. Taker, potentially. They both yeah. like to. I mean, I have the tag, the, the tag match on Saturday night. The entrances alone are going to be a half hour. I haven't seen the ramp, but does Wendy have a match? Randy does have a match. Mm-hmm. Randy's Rand- going. Randy's going to be in a triple his threat. Slow ass walk down to the rings too. <laughs> but now I'm gonna go Roman because Roman has the longer intro out of the two of them before he even comes out. He's on some Taker level shit when it comes to how long his intro takes. Yeah, yeah. No, like I said, that the tag match to end Saturday night. The entrances alone are going to take a half hour if they do them individually. You have Seth oh, Rollins. The rock. You have Seth Rollins who loves oh. to 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 soak in soak in the 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 woes. Um, you have Cody. You have The Rock, and oh you have Roman God. Reigns. We have The Rock doing his first in in wrestling gear entrance in years. Yes, oh, that's The yes. Rock. It's the rock. It's the rock. It's the rock. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to spend 10 minutes just on the top stage before he starts down the ramp. <laughs> yeah. It's the rock. Slapping his forearms. Unless they force him to because it's near the end of the night and they're running over time. But it's also the rock who Trish. just says, I fuck you. I do what I want. <laughs> so Triple H, Triple H said earlier today, uh, earlier yesterday on the Pat McAfee show that, um, that both nights it's just going to be ending whenever it ends. There's no there's no there's clock. No going over time. They just okay. have a start time. Okay. So I think I think that sounds like they're going to give every match whatever it what, gets. Uh, whatever they whatever they need. So yes, the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. That's a valid answer as well. All right. We'll slide right into a sim very similar but different question most pyro most pyro who gets the most pyro i'd say you have a cody rhodes yeah is is in there that's that's my front runner at the moment i'm just Um, looking over the card real quick to see if anybody else would switch that for me and i don't think so i think i'm going cody Here's an underdog one. All right. Jade Cargill. Ooh. Okay. That's a that's another one. Her I first saw. real introduction. Her first real entrance. I she hear says you. she's had entrances to promos and she's had run-ins where her song has played. She's never had a match entrance yeah. in the For- WWE. For for the epicness and it being mania, Pyro definitely makes sense. And Jade being that, if they're trying to present her in a certain way, I don't think she had a very Pyro heavy entrance in the other company when she was the monster heel Goldberg esque streak Uh person. She just kind of she was the spectacle. So that's the only reason I didn't say Jade, but I agree with your assessment of her being a good runner for it because it is WWE. It's I mean, WWE nobody's anymore. nobody's very everyone's very unlikely to even touch Cody Night Two. Yeah, <laughs> Cody Night Two is probably going to be where he gets all the fucking the pyro. amount of pyro that we've seen both nights so far come like it's gonna together. be it's gonna be jbl finally wins the championship and comes out on raw level of pyro <laughs> did you see that do you remember that i i, I not not directly no it, yeah it's an <laughs> intro where he comes out and it's playing that burr, burr, da, 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 and he like comes out gets out the limbo Long ass explosion takes some steps down the ramp, hands up, 
<laughs> gets in the ring and like three more times does like a raised hand and massive explosion chain of fireworks. It's like six minutes intro and it's like five multi-wave firework like <laughs> it's so over the top it's hilarious uh last one omari the crowd loves a holy shit moment where who the 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 give me the one person all right, the one getting person. getting that holy. Okay, is he even on the cut? So, I know the match I was gonna say, but there is someone that if he's on the card, I could see him just fucking trying to hurt himself. But I don't think he's on the card. Uh, well, and that's Ricochet. I, I was gonna say, I was gonna say Ricochet and JD McDonough are not on the cards right now. Okay, well, if. Then I'm saying it's happening in the six pack tag team ladder match because yes. my god, uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Two different sets of belts hanging above the ring. People have have strongly speculated that they will be in two different positions as well. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to be all four belts on one thing in the center. It's going to be a set of belts like towards the right of the ring a set of belts towards the left of the ring. Can we have two winners or do you have to get both yes. belts? They've already announced that if if somebody if somebody gets up there and pulls down one set of belts, the match continues for the other set of belts. Sounds amazing. <laughs> it's the second match of the no. night. No. <laughs> I don't want to miss it. It's Yeah, it's so going awesome. to be happening today in about in, in just a few hours. Uh, okay. Uh, I have to pick one person in this match. I'm a yeah. big. Who's gonna have the biggest holy shit moment? Kofi's getting up there in age, so, but he's usually the Royal Rumble holy shit guy. We do have. Oh God, you know I'm gonna give it to Kofi. Either Kofi or Gorg- or Gargano. I could see. But I'm gonna say Kofi. Gargano and Champa. I think are going. I'm going with the guy taking the thing taking the thing gargano then yeah it's gargano and champo have a high likelihood but i'm actually going to choose austin theory and by taking you mean like taking the bump yeah like something like that's going to be the the holy shit part of it is going to be some fucking crazy i just spelled i just spelled one word and then straight up said a worse word um, uh, <laughs> uh is going to be taking some sort of cell that is yeah if, if we're talking cells insane. then i'm gonna say gargano i think that's a really good pick i think i think it's i, I think I think the true holy shit moment is going to come out of DIY or a town down under um, because those guys, <laughs> those guys are, 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 are really good at selling. I, I like that tag team name. A- like it's going to end up being I don't Damian Priest just know like enough throwing somebody. Waller. To be fair, I don't know enough about Grayson Waller. Yeah. But Austin Theory Dude's got the look. Some I don't know what hasn't clicked for him. But I get why certain high level people in WWE in the past were high on the guy. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's the same story as Ricochet, just on the heel side of things. Like incredibly athletic, can do anything they want to do in the ring or outside of the ring. But it's just not. It's just not. Also, he got hit uh, with the John Cena curse. I beat Cena. Time well, to lose for a year. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> but, what are you doing? Cena, <laughs> Cena buries people by letting them win. I'll bury you by putting you over. Wait, what? I'm John <laughs> Cena, damn it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. Yeah, anything else you want to hit on for for for, for uh, WrestleMania? We talked about a we we've had several weeks of talking about it. 
I already, I'll just reiterate, we had the previous picks for all the matches on a previous episode, but yeah. I know I said Roman wins on that previous episode, and I'm going to just say on this one, as we're the morning of, I want Cody to leave this weekend with that title, but I'm also just, because I think it'll be hilarious, still saying that Roman wins on Sunday, and we all are disappointed, except for me, because I at least said that it would happen, despite not wanting it to happen. Yeah, <laughs> That's I, it. I, I really want Cody to win, but I love putting up that one. <laughs> I also don't know what they would do with Cody if he loses. Like, he Monday he, he win, Monday right? he comes back with black hair. Or darkens it overnight? Yeah. <laughs> like, look, the story's finished, okay? I'm not winning the title. Uh, the, the, the American the blonde, is... The blonde literally drained out of my hair overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer Super Saiyan. I'm back down to base <laughs> level Cody. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was only smoke and mirrors. I'm, cha- uh... I'm, I'm now announcing my challengership for the, for the United States Championship. <laughs> I'm gonna fight for the Intercontinental Championship, win that, and hold that for a year. <laughs> that's what I can hold is mid card titles. That's why I drafted him as such in our draft <laughs> as my mid card champion. That motherfucker can hold the hell out of his mid card title. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody go check out uh all that wrestling this weekend it's going to be fun as well as uh ncaa playoffs that's what we covered this week because it's you don't watch sports covering three topics sprinkling information in that sports conversation omari guiding light. guiding light through the sea that is sports talk um so they can also find me if that's what you were asking they yeah, find me elsewhere on this channel. Obviously, the two of us got a show called This Guy Hasn't Seen. We trade some things back and forth. Been doing that. We do that every week, every Tuesday. You can also find me over a hundred episodes, almost oh. two years long. Yeah, episode 100 is this Tuesday, right? Yes, or is it next Tuesday? It's soon, it's soon. Bottom line is. Yes, we got that. We also, I'm also found elsewhere on YouTube under Whatever We Want podcast. Do that with a good friend of mine, good friend of the show, Super Jazz. Super Jazz. Thank you very much, as nature intended. We'll get back into the hang of doing that soon, I'm assuming. Uh, I also have a Twitter and Twitch at Geotavi. That is G I O T A V I. Come on in, stop on by. Billy, you got anything else you want to say? This out. Uh, well, you know what? Um, uh oh something else is going on this weekend speaking of it if yeah you're in the st louis area right speaking of 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 jazz super jazz being a little busy and not being available for some for some whatever we want uh he has been producing a wonderful production called a colored funeral that if you are watching this in st louis on the weekend of april 6th and 7th you can still go see this and i would Highly recommend you do so. Uh, it is called A Color of Funeral. It is currently playing at the Jefferson Ave- Avenue Mission in South City, St. Louis, right off of uh, right off of Highway 44. Um, so go check that out uh, Saturday night or Sunday mid- midday. I believe it's um, a matinee showing. Okay. Aquarian oh. Rising Productions. Follow them on all their socials. Aquarian, yes. nah, not Aquarius. That's right. Well, with that, bye.